It is now time for member statements. Member statement, the member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's always great to stand and speak about the great things that are happening in Etobicoke Lakeshore. And, and first of all, I'd like to recognize Pat and, and Murray Wood, who reside in Tapestry at Village Gate West Retirement Home. And they were recognized for the good work they did to make their home a better place. And it was recognized by the Retirement Homes Regulatory Authority's 2023 Residence Champion Award. So I just uh, I had the opportunity to have coffee with uh, Pat and Murray, and what a lovely time it was to learn about their residents and what they do to make everyone's life that much better in our community. So thank you to both of them. I also want to congratulate the team at Mabel Arts, and I had the opportunity to join a seniors' chair yoga class, and what a great time that was. And that yoga class was made possible by our own Raymond Cho and our seniors' grant. So I want to thank the Minister of uh, Seniors and Accessibility for ensuring that our seniors can be active in, in their residence. And I had a great time, too, and I'm not a senior just yet. And then I walked across the uh, street to see the community centre that they're building. It's under construction. But I want to thank our government uh, for almost $200,000 investment into this wonderful place that's just going to be a meeting place for, for the community members to have barbecues, to have watch plays, just to get together and have that conversation because so many of our seniors out there need that companionship. Lastly, I know Remembrance Day is coming up, and I'd like to take the time to remember and honour those who have fought for our freedoms and continue to keep us safe. May well they said. never be forgotten. Thank you. Member statement. Member statement. The member from Thunder Bay Atacokan. Thank you and good morning, Speaker. I rise today to celebrate the recent graduation of 10 new recruits to the Thunder Bay Fire Service. These recruits, now qualified firefighters, have gone through an extensive 14 weeks of training and education, clocking in over 500 hours each. I stand with much respect reflecting on their graduation, as the recruits have now stepped into their roles, protecting and serving the residents of Thunder Bay. Speaker, becoming a firefighter is not a job, it is a calling. It is a commitment to protect and serve others, often in the face of great personal danger. It's about providing comfort to someone in their darkest hour, offering a helping hand in times of need, and being a pillar of strength when all is lost. It is a vocation that demands unwavering courage, compassion, and selfless dedication to public safety. Throughout my 21 years as a firefighter, I have experienced the camaraderie, sacrifice, and determination alongside my fellow service members, and I have been blessed with being part of the fire service family. Speaker, this province has a long history of supporting our first responders, and I'm proud to say these new firefighters are a valued addition to the family. To the most recent graduates in Thunder Bay, welcome to the noble profession of firefighting. May you return home safely at the end of every shift. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Kiwetno. Good morning, uh, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, uh, I wish I was standing here, up here this morning, to share good news. But the news from the north is sad today. Elena Beardy, age 11, took her own life in my home community of Kingfisher Lake First Nation. At this time, words are not enough. Her family classmates, and all of Kingfisher Lake and Sachigo Lake are affected. Their grief is unimaginable. I'm going to share uh, what was sent out by her family. Elena was a, always a happy young lady, always had a ready smile for everyone. She was always willing to lend a helping hand, especially to her friends that she left behind. We called her Princess Elena, or baby, because that's, that was who she was with us. She loved everyone around her. Princess Elena will be forever missed and 
will be forever in our hearts, end quote. Her family requests uh, continued prayers for her friends. Miigwech for listening. And if you have a moment today, think of uh, Elena, her family, and friends. Our hearts and prayers are uh, in Kingfisher Lake and Sachigo Lake today. Miigwech. Member statements. I recognize the member for Kitchener, South Hespler. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I, uh, I hosted my very first community event last week, which is uh, admittedly a little bit delayed as I, I was elected in June of 2022, but it takes me a while to get around to these things. Um, it ended up being absolutely wonderful, and I have a lot of people to thank. We held it at Steckley Farm, which is a beautiful heritage um, working farm in my area, and I can thank my friend uh, Corey for that idea. For those who are sort of old hat at holding MPP community events, um, I, uh, I, I look forward to the day where I, I have your outlook. Um, we were doing a, um, a pumpkin patch and uh, funnel cakes courtesy of the Funnel Cloud, and uh, I, I had uh, some moments of extreme fear where I thought it was just going to be my dog George and I sitting alone on 200 pumpkins eating funnel cakes for an entire community and no one would come. Um, but that did not happen. We had an absolutely wonderful turnout of people from the community. And uh, I have to give a ton of thanks to, uh, to a lot of people. My, my dad, as always, uh, was a, a huge uh, help in that, and also my friend Corey and her husband Todd, who brought all the pumpkins, and my volunteers, uh, Benita, Monica, Jerry, Marie, Angie, Megan, and, uh, and Steph. It was wonderful to see people from the community come out. We had um, Fauja from uh, uh, Cambridge Muslim Women and uh, Wissam from the uh, Coalition of Muslim Women, and it's just lovely to see people that I've spoken to uh, coming to my event. So anyway, thank you so much to everybody that helped me put it on and make it such a success. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. We're all deeply saddened and horrified by the recent tragedy in Sault Ste. Marie. Angie Sweeney and her three children were killed in a case of intimate partner violence. The sad reality is that such tragedies happen far too often. Last year in Ontario, 52 women, which is nearly one per week, were killed at the hands of their intimate partners. And by September of this year, there were already 46 similar cases. Shelters and support organizations are overwhelmed by the demand for help, and these numbers are not going down. They are on the rise. Over 30 municipalities in the province have already declared intimate partner violence an epidemic. The Renfrew County inquest last year made 86 recommendations, and the first recommendation was for Ontario to formally declare intimate partner violence an epidemic, which this government has refused, arguing that intimate partner violence isn't an epidemic because it's not an infectious disease that spreads from person to person. This kind of petty debate over language in the face of such tragedy is ridiculous. Declaring intimate partner violence an epidemic is important because it means the government acknowledges the urgency of the problem and is committed through resources to address a very real threat facing women and families. I urge this government, show some leadership, declare intimate partner violence an epidemic. We don't have time to waste. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Perth Wellington is a place of vibrant energy growth, and today I want to celebrate an incredible success story of one of our small businesses. Last Friday, I had the pleasure of attending the grand opening of Grit Engineering's brand new expanded location in Stratford. Grit Engineering, founded and led by Montana Wilson, is a shining example of what small businesses can achieve when they can combine determination, dedication, and vision. They offer a wide array of high-quality services, including geotechnical engineering, civil engineering, surveying, and environmental services. It's no exaggeration to say that grit engineering plays a vital role in building our great province. 
It's wonder it was wonderful to walk through their state-of-the-art facility, witness the cutting-edge technology they employ, and meet some of their dedicated team. What's even more remarkable is that Grit Engineering is one of the few female-led consulting engineering firms in Ontario. The company also provides 24 individuals in our local community with well-paying jobs and with the majority of employees being under the age of 40. This is, they're not just building infrastructure, Speaker. They're building careers and opportunities in Perth, Wellington. Montana's recent recognition as the recipient of Ontario Home Builders Association's inaugural Service Professional of the Year Award is a testament to the outstanding professionalism and integrity that she brings to everything she does. She is truly a role model for young women everywhere. Speaker, it's great to see continued success of small businesses in our rural community. I want to wish Montana and Nick and their whole team much success. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Mental health matters, and it is my honour to recognize a member of our community in Durham Region who is making an immeasurable difference in the lives and futures of young people across this country. Mike Shorman was living an active life as an athlete, coach, and paddleboard instructor with plans and a bright and unfolding future. He was struck suddenly in 2018, however, with a rare neurological condition called Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, which left him with permanent nerve damage on his right side struggling and with a heavy prognosis of never being able to paddleboard again. He had to relearn the basics of walking and functioning. Imagine the news, the shock, and the depths of emotional challenge that comes with a life change like that. Mike's mental health was dealt a very heavy blow, and yet, because of the support he had and the ultimate personal power that wasn't ready to give up, Mike began his climb back onto his paddleboard and slowly his climb out of despair and into hope. He worked hard to get back on the paddleboard and regain his footing. He went from relearning to remarkable. Mike undertook the challenge of paddling across all five Great Lakes, and with his remarkable, inspiring support team, they did it. Mike Shorman became the first person with a disability to cross all five Great Lakes. On World Mental Health Day at Ontario Shores, I joined Mike and community members for the screening of his feature-length film, When Hope Breaks Through. Sharing the journey was about sharing the pain and the hope with youth who might also be struggling with mental health and also struggling to stay afloat. Mike has been raising money and working tirelessly to bring awareness to the need for systems of support for youth mental health. Mike Shorman is awesome, and I hope that everyone will watch and share when hope breaks through. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'd like to say a few words of congratulations to an important organization in Ottawa South, Pearly Health. Formerly, formerly known as Pearly Rideau Veterans Health Centre, Pearly Health is a unique long-term care and independent living home that is home to more than 600 seniors and veterans. They are a leading advocate for improving the well-being and quality of care for the senior population through education, clinical innova innovation, and research. With over 800 employees and 400 volunteers, they work hard every day to improve the lives of the seniors that they serve. Through the Centre of Excellence in Frailty-Informed Care, they provide a space for future caregivers to learn through hands-on experiences. Today, I'd like to highlight their wonderful achievement of completing their $10 million campaign, Answering the Call. It is their largest fundraising cam uh, campaign ever, and it aims to foster innovation and excellence in Ottawa and across Canada. On November 20th, they will be honouring those who have answered the call to highlight their important contributions to improving the everyday lives of the seniors and veterans at Pearly Health and indeed in Ontario and across Canada. To everyone at Pearly Health, thank you for caring for the people we care for most. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last weekend, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Youth Association organized a charity youth run in Mississauga to raise funds for Trillium Health Partner Cancer Research Program. This enthusiastic youth are making a difference in our community, an example of amazing things that Ontario youth can offer. And it reminds us that it continues to be our responsibility as leaders of this province to show them our full support. I recently joined the Minister of Education and member of Brampton 
West for the grand opening of a new daycare campus in Peel, the largest child care centre in Canada. Lulaboo Child Care is just one of many organizations that are supporting our children in Mississauga and across Ontario. Our government has cut children care fees by 50% and our investments are continuing to support children and families. I thank the Minister for his dedication to this important cause. I was honoured to be joined by, in my riding on October 27th by Minister of Long-Term Care for groundbreaking of a new long-term care project. The Ivan Franco Homes Long-Term Care New Campus in Winston Churchill Brevard with 160 modern beds will provide seniors with convenient and culturally connected care. This plan was over six years in the making, and now it's finally underway. This is a great success for Mississauga Iron Mills and a success for all the, of Ontario. Yet another promise made, promise kept. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, everyone. The, uh, my community of Sault Ste. Marie has endured quite a lot over the course of the last uh, six weeks or so. As many of you know, recent events, but it's been a long, um, it's been a, a very, very difficult and trying time. On September 5th of this year, Constable Orette Robinson, Sioux Police Officer, was killed in a traffic accident. The very next day, on September 6th, Michaela Ouellette was involved in a traffic accident. She was 27 years old. She, uh, she passed along with her unborn child. On September 7th, the very next day, a horrific stabbing incident occurred. Uh, an individual took the life of 22-year-old Taylor Marshall in a horrible stabbing incident. Then he proceeded off to our boardwalk where he attempted to murder another. The community as a whole did not know how things could get any harder. Uh, we are a small city of just about 75,000 people. Those three days felt like the worst three days we could have imagined. Then October 23rd happened. Angela Sweeney was murdered, 41 years old. Then the uh, individual proceeded to the residence of his uh, ex-partner, where he proceeded to um, shoot her and shoot his three children and then himself. We held a vigil uh, last week on Friday. Uh, we had about 1,000 people arrived, including Angela's father. Our community uh, is mourning. Our community needs to heal. And our community did an exceptional job of coming together in solidarity to attempt to heal. And I want to thank everyone here for all of their kind words that I've received to date. We appreciate that you've been thinking about us. And um, it's, uh, it's something that uh, it's, it's, been, it's been helpful. I want to quote, I know I'm over time here, Mr. Speaker, but the words of uh, Shirley Marshall, she had me read a letter. She was the mother of Taylor. She said, Sault Ste. Marie, small city, big heart, and we really are that community. And then the father of Angela Sweeney spoke at the event and said, at times like this, it's everybody's love that's making it easier to get through. So please share that love, continue to share that love. It doesn't cost a thing, it's free. Thank you. Thank you very much.